Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, when Elijah came to Herod, the mount of God, he lodged in a cave. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Let, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let, Let us see, O Lord, your, Lord, your mercy, mercy, and grant us your, your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring forth the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, mercy and grant us your salvation. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Let us, Let us see, see, O Lord, Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking the truth in Christ, I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and uneasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ. For the sake of my brothers and sisters, my king's men according to the flesh. They are Israelites and to them belong the sonship, the glory, the covenants, the give of the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises, to them belong the patriarchs, and of their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I long for you, O Lord, my soul longs for his word. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
After the crowd was satisfied, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was many furlongs distant from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately he spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, bid me come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure that you have watched, as I have, a toddler taking his or her first steps. Perhaps you're a parent or an aunt or ag- uncle or a sibling who has yourself said to a tiny child, come to me, and have held out your arms from a few steps away to catch them. Usually the first few times, the child courageously but unsteadily takes a step or two before losing their balance or their nerve. But you, as the one who knows and loves them, are looking out for that moment and putting out your hands to grasp and hold them at exactly the moment they need it. Even though the child is a little unsteady on their feet, no good parent would discourage a toddler ready to learn to walk from the process of trying. They know they won't manage it the first time, but the child has to feel safe enough to try. I sense the story of Jesus and Peter today has something of this dynamic in it. Peter wants to do something he's not fully ready for. Jesus encourages him, if you want to come close to me, step out of the boat and come. Peter takes his first haltering steps. He feels the frightening impact of the winds on the waves. He looks down, panics, and starts to sink. But Jesus, like the good parent teaching a child to walk, is right there. Immediately, he puts his hand out to grasp it and hold him up. I suspect the words, you of little faith, why did you doubt? are said not with a tone of rebuke, but with a loving assurance. Of course I'm here. I've got you. Don't you know that I would never let you sink? I wonder... How often after the death of Jesus, Peter might have remembered that experience and how it felt when Jesus firmly grasped him by the hand. Perhaps when he was stepping out courageously in ministry and experiencing the storm of dangers that resulted ultimately in his own crucifixion. Did his courage come partly from the experience of knowing that no matter what the storm, Jesus would be there to catch him? We also experience storms in our own lives. Some of these storms are in the external circumstances. When things are going wrong, we lose our job. A relationship that matters deeply to us crumbles unexpectedly. A parent or child dies. When our carefully crafted plans are upended by life's unexpected crises. For many of us, there are also internal storms. Storms of anxiety or shame or an inner critical voice that constantly undermines us and erodes our confidence. Sometimes those winds and the waves they create 
batter us from within. Jesus himself has been facing a storm. He has only in the previous 24 hours received the devastating news of his cousin John's beheading. He is undoubtedly in the storm of grief. I imagine perhaps there is also an inner storm of anxiety about his own safety. But he has spent the night up the mountain alone with his father. He has soaked himself deeply in prayer and found a place of inner peace that allows him to not sink into the waters of grief and anxiety, but to walk on them, upheld by the love of the Father. We too need that still place of quiet with God, that we know Elijah, in the midst of his own challenges, also found in our first reading today. When Elijah encountered God in that moment, in the still, small, murmuring sound, he was also able to receive God's next mission for him. He was grasped by God and able to stop sinking into despair and panic. Whatever the storm in our own lives right now, whether in our outer circumstances or our inner emotions or both, when our focus is on Jesus and when, like him, we spend time soaking in the love of the Father, we will not sink. He will teach us to walk on water, to move forward in deep trust, no matter the ferocity of the wind and waves, because like the little child learning to walk, we know that when we falter, we will be surely grasped firmly by loving arms and held safe. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, and help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.